Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here giving a course, I guess, something like 15 years ago. So this is a continuation. <laughs> uh, it will be, um, I'm going to give three lectures. The lecture today, uh, it's uh, meant to be an introduction. So I want to be very qualitative. Uh, and uh, just give the ideas of what, uh, why I'm doing uh, something, and uh, uh, what are the perspectives, uh, more what are the open problems than what I did. Uh, then in the tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, uh, I will give, I will instead give some details, some technical details of what I'm uh, doing. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, 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 I mean, the, 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 there are methods and techniques which are kind of classical, and I want to remind you of that. Okay, so uh, uh, what, what I'm going to talk started, uh, uh, it's uh, something I've been doing uh, in, in the last year. Uh, and it all started when uh, Maria Eulalia Vares visited me. Uh, she was giving a course, a PhD course in my department and told me that she was working with uh, Renato Fontes and Domingo Marchetti on, uh, on some percolation problem, critical percolation in uh, uh, highly anisotropic systems. And since I'm... Uh, I'm not good at all in, in percolation. I asked her, let's try to find uh, some statistical mechanics analog of the model so that I can give some contribution. And uh, so we worked it out a little bit and we had uh, uh, so, so some, a few models. And uh, let me uh, start by telling you the, uh, the one which is most appealing to me and uh, that is still a totally open problem. Uh, so that was, uh, uh, so I, some historical remark, as usual in a, in a course, I mean, I, I start from Van der Waals. You know? So uh, Van der Waals said, uh, I imagine, I did this problem that uh, uh, people were uh, saying that uh, equation of state for a gas is uh, PV equal NKT, uh, this famous formula, and this is the equation of states for an ideal gas. And then the question is, but uh, in this ideal gas, it's ideal because one forgets about the interaction about, uh, among the molecules. So uh, the question was, how should I correct this equation in order to take into account the interaction between molecules? And uh, Van der Waals said a, a, very, a very beautiful uh, way of putting it. So, so he was saying, OK, P is the pressure. So it's uh, the force per unit area that we have to impose to keep confined the system where it is. Okay, but now there is, uh, uh, um, the molecules are interacting and there will be uh, an attractive tail in the interaction uh, among molecules. So, so they want to stick together. So there is a term, uh, the, 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 this attractive interaction is something which adds to P because it has the same effect. It tries to keep the system confined. So I was saying, instead of P, I should put P plus alpha rho square over two. Alpha is a positive constant. And this rho square over two, you can interpret it as uh, indicating that uh, it's the number of pairs. Uh, it's proportional to the number of pairs of molecules uh, which are in the system and they are interacting attractively. 
So this P goes into this, but also V is changed. Because V, you should think that V is the volume which is available to a molecule. Now, a molecule will have some uh, spatial structure, so it will have some inner volume, let's say A, no? so that uh, uh, if I look at a molecule, the space which is really available to that molecule is not V, but it's rather V minus the number of particles times A, because this is the volume occupied by the other molecules. And so he said, OK, this, uh, let's suppose that this is uh, the equation of state of a gas. So this is van der Waals. And this is an, uh, an, a nice formula, because, uh, uh, well, if, uh, if the density is very small, so rho uh, n is small, rho is uh, also small, then this looks like this one. But if the uh, density is large, uh, so we fix t and we plot p in terms of v, we get uh, uh, something like that. t is smaller than some critical value. OK, so this is uh, nice because it says that it's quite different from this one. But it's not so nice because uh, one, a law of thermodynamics says that uh, uh, cannot be that uh, P uh, increases with V. Could always be decreasing. Uh, no, so, so, so this is thermodynamically wrong. And at that time, uh, one had to fix it. And the idea was, uh, by Maxwell, to say that to replace by this. So instead of doing this uh, trip, it goes like that. A and you should put this uh, horizontal line in such a way that these two areas are equal. And this is Maxwell. equal area rule. So van der Waals plus Maxwell equal area rule give a definite candidate for the equation of state. Uh, and this equation of state is, uh, is nice because it's uh, at least qualitatively is in agreement with, uh, uh, with the real gas behavior at l for small, for not too large densities, for small temperatures. And uh, also nice is the fact that, uh, due to the fact that there is this uh, uh, flat part, this system exhibits a phase transition, which is interpreted as a phase transition from uh, vapor to liquid. So this was a nice theory. And you can imagine that there have been effort to try to derive it in, in a more mathematical way than uh, this argument that I sketched here. Uh, so the, the first thing, I mean, uh, now I, I don't know whether I'm historically correct. So I'm reinterpreting the history, if you want. But I imagine that uh, very soon it was realized that uh, uh, this equation is uh, actually uh, correct in the sense that uh, uh, if I take a system of R rods with uh, attractive mean field, interaction, I really get uh, uh, van der Waals. So a, a rods means that I'm considering a system in one dimension. So it's an interval. And in each interval, the particles are not point particles, but are sticks of length a.
then if you, I mean, I, I'll be more precise later in a simpler model. So here I'm just sketching things. So if you consider uh, the, uh, the free energy for this system, which means that you consider uh, the canonical partition function when you fix the number of particles, like n, and uh, uh, then you take v to infinity and then to infinity in such a way that n over v is rho, then you get uh, a free energy, f, which will depend on rho and t. And this is in agreement. Uh, I mean, if one does the, the thermodynamics, uh, the, does computation. If I try to do that here, I would not succeed, so I will not try. Uh, but I mean, this f gives you uh, this equation of state. So mean field uh, canonical free energy is the wrong one if you want because it's giving you this thing. So this is, uh, uh, I mean, we, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we will come back on this on a simpler model, so, so it will be clear. Uh, at this moment, just accept my words that if you do uh, the computation, canonical partition function, take the log, take the limit, you get uh, a free energy which corresponds to an equation of states like that. Uh, there is another way to do things in statistical mechanics that is to uh, not to, to fix the, uh, the density, but to fix the chemical potential. So the number of particles are free to, uh, to vary. In that case, you get uh, a pressure which is a function of another parameter, lambda, which is the chemical potential, and the temperature. Then if you plot uh, the equation of state for this, uh, thank you, uh, this is the gram canonical uh, pressure. Then you can, uh, you, you can write down what is the equation of states for this, and then you get uh, uh, this curve with the Maxwell rule. Usually in statistical mechanics, there is equivalence of ensembles. Which, uh, which says that uh, uh, this free energy and this pressure are one the Legendre transform of the other. Uh, now, what happens is that this P is the Legendre transform of F. That's correct, but F is not the Legendre transform of P. So there is, uh, in this model, there is no equivalence of ensemble. So one is uh, uh, partially happy, if you want. No, because uh, from one side we have uh, a model of particles which uh, gives these pictures. But, but it's in a sense contradictory because it gives one or the other according to which ensemble we choose that we don't like. And then the other thing which we don't like is that it's a mean field so that uh, in the limit is not well defined when you take uh, the number of particles to infinity. It doesn't make sense. No, so, so the, I mean, one has to fix something. And then, uh, I mean, the, this is quite natural to say now, but uh, it took some time before it really developed. Because the way out is this one, uh, if, you, if you want, it's the natural. Uh, mean field means that each uh, particle is interacting with each other no matter where they are. No? So you can approximate, you, 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 you can think that you have uh, a very long range interaction. 
so, so that uh, it's only when the particles are very much far away from each other that they feel that they are far away, but otherwise they, uh, they're they interacting almost the same. So the idea was to approximate mean field by long range interactions. So what's the advantage of that? Is that if you have a long range interaction but it's fixed, then the general theorem of statistical mechanics tell you that there is equivalence of ensembles. No? So uh, these are uh, one the Legendre transform of the other. They are convex function, of course, because they are a Legendre transform of each other, uh, as they should for uh, uh, thermodynamical reasons. Uh, OK, uh, so, so you do the thermodynamic limit with this approximate long range interaction, uh, approximate mean field long range interaction, uh, and you get these two quantities. Which are, which are one the Legendre transform of the other, and then take the limit when the long range interaction goes to infinity. And then if you do all this, uh, you get uh, uh, only this curve. So it's uh, the van der Waals equation with incorporated Maxwell equal area rule. So let me tell you a little bit more what is this approximate mean field long range interaction. Because it's uh, uh, something that will be discussed at length. So uh, the, the, this was uh, uh, proposed by Katz. So Katz uh, was saying that this system of our rods uh, are interacting, so the Hamiltonian of a configuration of our rods, by Q I mean a collection Q1, Qn of positions, uh, then uh, this interaction is equal to minus, uh, these are positions on the, on the line, on an interval, in this interval. Uh, and this interaction is minus uh, alpha over 2, uh, sum over all pairs, let's say qi, qj, different from each other. And, uh, uh, and then there is this uh, Katz potential. And I should add the condition that these are rods by saying that uh, qi minus qj should be larger than a. a greater than 0 is the length of the r rods. No, so it means that uh, r rods cannot overlap. So I have a configuration of n r rods, and their energy is given by this formula. And I have to tell you what is big gamma. V gamma is this one. It's uh, given by uh, gamma times a function V fixed, which doesn't depend on gamma, uh, of gamma QI minus QJ. So this uh, uh, V is a function, let's say, from uh, uh, one, uh, one dimensional variable R to V of R. And this function is uh, um, a probability density, which I suppose smooth. And I suppose also that uh, V of R is equal to 0 if R is larger than 1. This was not in uh, original Katz proposal, but uh, it's convenient for my purposes. OK. So, uh, uh, so uh, l l let me comment on a little bit on this to give you an, an idea of what's happening. 
So you see, uh, uh, this V as uh, a support one is on the unit ball. No? So uh, QI and QJ, uh, in order to interact, should be at distance which is of order gamma minus one. In order for this to be uh, uh, non-zero. Okay, so one particle QI is interacting with all particle QJ, which are in a ball of radius gamma minus one, ball one-dimensional ball. So it's an interval. So the, typically, there will be uh, order gamma minus one particles which are interacting with a given one. Okay, but here there is a gamma in front of it, so that the total interaction is of order one. So this is the old trick of Katz potential. So you see, if, uh, if the volume that I'm considering is of the order of gamma minus, minus one, then each particle is more or less interacting with each other, and it's a mean field. But if the volume is much larger than gamma minus one, it's no longer a mean field. Because uh, there are many particles which are, are not interacting with another one. So it's a kind of a compromise. Because in a big ball, because gamma is going to be small, uh, the interaction looks like mean field. But if I look farther away, I, I realize that it's not mean field. It's really something which decays. OK, so uh, what uh, was the uh, 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 this, uh, this f and p are obtained, let's say, p. I, I take the log, or f, let's say. f, I take, uh, uh, so f of rho t and lambda. Lambda is this interval. is minus 1 over lambda, the log of the partition function. <coughs> and here I should put uh, a gamma. And here I should put a gamma to remind me that uh, this partition function is computed with an interaction which depends on gamma. At the moment, I, I'm not telling you uh, the exact formula for this uh, Z. Uh, I, I'll give it uh, in, a, in a short while in a simpler case of the Ising model. So uh, here there are integrals. So what you do is you take first uh, uh, lambda to infinity, and then one gets f of rho and t, which still depends on gamma, and then take gamma to zero. Gamma to zero means uh, uh, range to infinity, and then one gets van der Waals. Plus Maxwell. So this kind of theorem uh, has been uh, proved by uh, Katz, Katz, Ullenbeck, and Emmer, but uh, in, in some special case, uh, and um, in more general cases by Leibovitz and Perros. That is not only for uh, interaction uh, one-dimensional systems, but in many dimensions and for more general uh, interactions. And usually this goes under Lebovitz Penrose. So this was a theory uh, essentially developed in the 60s. Uh, now, the question which arises is whether we are really 
proving Van der Waals uh, with, uh, from statistical mechanics by this method? And the answer is, uh, it's, not, it's not. I mean, it's, uh, we are close, but not really there. And the reason is this one, that uh, take, for instance, this specific case I'm considering. No? Then, uh, then we are proving that uh, in this double limit, we are getting a phase transition. No? Uh, so so the, this is convergent as gamma goes to zero. So one may argue that, OK, uh, if in the limit I have a phase transition, I have also before the limit. So the question is whether when gamma is, if it happens that when gamma is positive but not yet zero, I still have uh, an equation of states like van der Waals with a phase transition. And the answer is no. And the reason is simple because the system is one dimensional. And there is a general theorem which says that uh, statistical mechanics in D equal one with uh, finite range interaction doesn't have a phase transition. So the, the phase transition is an artifact of the fact that we are sending gamma to zero. No, but uh, in the limit gamma to zero, I, I don't have a statistical mechanics system. I have, I have it only with uh, the interaction are well defined only when gamma is positive. So when gamma is positive, I don't have a phase transition. In the limit, I get a phase transition, but no statistical mechanics system with gamma positive as it. OK, so uh, how could one try to fix it? Uh, well, the, the first thing is to say, OK, let's go in D greater or equal than 2. Since in D equal 1, we don't have a phase transition, the first thing is to go to D equal 2. So if, if we go to D equal 2, we can repeat this lebowitz penrose theory, and it works. So we still uh, we have, again, a phase transition in the limit gamma to 0. But the question is, do we have it before? And this is a question mark. This is a question mark, and it's, uh, uh, it's a question mark that is killing me, because I'm trying to prove it one way or the other <laughs> in the last 10 years or 15 years without success. Uh, the, the reason, <laughs> I mean, I, I, in a sense, even if I succeed in proving a phase transition gamma positive, uh, it would not give me the Van der Waals equation. No, because uh, the, the thermodynamics, the equation of states which comes out of this is not the, the Van der Waals equation of state. And the reason is that uh, here in D equal two, instead of R rods, I have R balls. And it's no longer true that uh, 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 that, uh, that I can represent uh, the exclusion between these rods as Van der Waals does it. You remember, Van der Waals was saying the space available to one ball is the total volume minus the volume occupied by the other balls. But uh, in D equal 2, it depends really on the geometry. If the R balls are closed, to each other, then uh, uh, there is, for instance, uh, if two R balls are like these, this contributes to the excluded volume, but I cannot put a, a particle here because it would overlap. And so this reflects on the fact that uh, the equation of states is much more complicated. And I mean, the system with, with R balls 
by itself, even without an attractive interaction, uh, may or may not have a phase transition by itself. In two dimensions, it seems that there is no phase transition. In three dimensions, uh, there is uh, some theoretical argument which indicates that there is no phase transition, but it's doubtful. And uh, there are numerical simulations seem to indicate that there is a phase transition. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, a very complicated matter, I mean, to study the, this problem. Uh, let me just mention, because that was the thing I was talking about uh, in my course a few years ago here at Poincaré, that uh, in this case we can prove a phase transition if instead of hard balls we consider repulsive four body uh, uh, cuts potentials. This was something I did with uh, Joe Libowitz and, uh, and uh, Alec Masel. But uh, I mean, I want to go back. I mean, my, my point here is that I, I really want to derive the equation of states of Van der Waals. So I, I really want to be in a, uh, with our rods in one dimension. So the, the way, uh, this was the model we introduced with, uh, uh, with Maria Olalia. Uh, that is, and we were happy to have introduced it, but then realized that it was already known, and it actually was <laughs> proposed, as you can imagine, by Katz. Katz Elfan. And this is a model where, uh, where uh, instead of having a line with our rods, I have an array of lines. So on each line, I have a rod. And so on. So these are rods are uh, interacting horizontally with a cat's potential. So I have uh, this very strong mean field like cuts interaction horizontally. And uh, I mean, if I had only that, I wouldn't have any phase transition because uh, this would be a one dimensional system on each line. I mean, they are independent, and uh, each one doesn't have a phase transition nor they together. So I have to put an interaction, and I'm supposing that there is a small interaction small vertical interaction, which means that uh, each R rod interacts with the R rods which are in the contiguous lines in, uh, with a finite range. OK, so, uh, so this was the model. Uh, we wanted to study. And uh, we found right away several difficulties. So let me tell you what is the approach to study uh, these systems. It's based on, uh, uh, on Pirogov-Sinai theory. So, it, it, so it's a perturbation theory. 
So there, there are two ingredients uh, that uh, we have to, uh, to fulfill. One is that, uh, so it's a perturbation theory. For, for a perturbation theory to work, it means that it should perturb something that we know. So the something that we know is uh, uh, the, the mean field. Behavior. So if instead of taking a cat's potential, which have, uh, think I think I, I really take mean field, I should know everything about it. And then, uh, so I, uh, the, the, the theory is, uh, is studied as a perturbation for small gamma of the gamma equals zero mean field behavior. So this is one thing that we need. The other thing that we need is something technical in Pirog of Sinai. And this is the following. In the mean field behavior, you, you will find that there are two densities, which are uh, the densities for which there is a phase transition. And uh, 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 what Pirog of Sinai requires is to study configurations which are constrained to be close to those densities everywhere, in a sense that has to be specified, and I will do that later. And uh, what you need is that uh, in these in restricted ensembles are called. So it's essentially are, are ensembles where the configuration of particles are either close to one phase or to the other. OK, so in each one of them, there should be decay of correlations. More technically, cluster expansion. OK, so we realized quite, quite uh, soon with Mario Lalia that uh, uh, neither one of these works. That is, uh, the mean field behavior, so the behavior when gamma goes to 0, we don't know it. It seems to be a difficult problem. On this, I will come back later uh, today. So this part is, is missing, and this other as well, because what's happening is that uh, the densities at which we're supposed to have a phase transition if everything works are densities for which uh, the, uh, the hard rods and uh, so even if I neglect the um, vertical interaction, I only consider the horizontal one. But if, if this, uh, sorry, I only consider our rods without any interaction, neither horizontal nor vertical, just our rods. At the densities that I want to study, then cluster expansion doesn't apply. This is maybe, can be fixed, maybe, because on the other end, this system are one dimensional. So in one dimension, maybe cluster expansion doesn't work, but everything works fine. So maybe one can do something. But this other part, it's uh, really bad. So, uh, so the, the way out, uh, we thought, was, OK, let's uh, it's difficult to study the mean field behavior because of the vertical interaction. The horizontal interaction is all right because it's cats, and one can use the typical techniques of cats potentials. But the vertical one, it's uh, re really uh, finite range, and one cannot use these coarse graining techniques. Uh, and uh, and that, that's hard. So the idea. Uh, we had was, OK, let's, uh, let's suppose that the vertical interaction is really small. So it goes to 0 as gamma goes to 0. Then uh, this part can be uh, It's much easier to study, because the vertical interaction is small and can be studied perturbatively. But uh, the question is, uh, maybe if it's too small, we lose the phase transition. No, because if, if it was absent, 
completely absent, this would be independent one-dimensional systems and we wouldn't have a phase transition. So the question is, how small can I take the vertical interaction so that uh, uh, the phase transition persists? Okay, so, uh, so far I've been uh, just uh, qualitatively telling you things and uh, avoiding most of the definitions. Now I try to be a little bit more precise. Oh, by, by the way, I, I, I didn't tell you, but uh, I mean, feel totally free not only to ask questions, but to object to whatever I say and uh, do it in a Russian way, if you want. This was for Dimi. <laughs> So the, the thing I, uh, I'm going to talk about is the easing version of this model. So I take, uh, again, uh, the array. But this is actually Z2. So on each, uh, on each side, I have a spin. Sigma, so the site is x is the x-coordinate, and i is the level, the vertical one. So this belongs to minus 1, 1. And the Hamiltonian h, which depends on a configuration sigma, will be uh, an horizontal interaction. So it will be minus sum over i, and then sum over x different from y, j gamma xy, which is the previous uh, cut's potential, but I write it as j gamma because usually when one deals with spins, uses j as the coupling strength. And then sigma xi, sigma yi. So this is uh, the cat's interaction on each line, and I'm stopping over it. And then there is uh, the vertical interaction, which is minus a parameter lambda, which is the strength of the interaction. This is positive. And then a sum over x and i, sum over i, sum over x of sigma xi, sigma xi plus 1. So if you want, this is the formal Hamiltonian. It's formal because, I mean, I, I should write it on, on a finite set, and then it's, the sum is finite, and this is well defined. So we have a theorem which is uh, something I wrote in collaboration with uh, uh, Renato Fontes. Uh, 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 Domingo Marchetti. Uh, Titti Merola, uh, Maria Olalia Vares. and myself. So this theorem says the following. Let's uh, take uh, fix beta larger than one. So why beta larger than 1 is because uh, uh, the mean field uh, limit for the cut's potential has a, fa uh, has a critical 
temperature which is 1. So if I take the inverse critical temperature larger than 1, I'm in the, in the range where mean field has a phase transition. So I fix beta uh, larger than 1, and I take any positive n. And uh, choose lambda, which is the strength of the interaction equal to gamma to the n. OK, then uh, exists uh, a value gamma star, which depends on n and beta, so that uh, for any gamma smaller or equal than gamma star, the system has a phase transition. That is, uh, uh, the, Gibbs the limit Gibbs measure with plus boundary condition, gamma, beta, gamma to the n, is different from the Gibbs measure with minus boundary conditions in the thermodynamic limit. So I repeat, this is the uh, limit Gibbs measure when I study uh, the system with cuts potential determined by gamma at inverse temperature beta larger than 1 uh, when lambda is equal to gamma to the n. Then if gamma is small enough, this measure in the thermodynamic limit uh, fills, the, uh, fills the, the boundary condition that I imposed because the one with plus boundary condition is different from the one with minuses. So even if I take uh, a lambda, which is really very small, because here I can take n equal to 1 billion, so it's uh, gamma to the n for gamma small, it's really very small. Nonetheless, there is an interaction between the lines which couples them in such a way that they produce a phase transition. So this is uh, uh, what we were looking for, because in order to study the system with our rods, uh, then we can conjecture that we can take gamma to the n. And then the vertical interaction is easy to study. So this is positive in the direction of studying the system with our rods. Uh, let me tell you uh, what is uh, the reason why gamma to the n uh, works. So I have to say something about uh, what happens only with one line. So I consider spins on a line uh, with, uh, with this interaction. OK, only cuts interaction. at uh, beta larger than 1. Then what I can do is the following. I can introduce uh, an empirical magnetization. So I fix a configuration sigma on the line, and I consider this function, which is simply the interaction which is here. So it's uh, some over y of j gamma x y sigma y. So gamma is small, and this is uh, an average, essentially an average over, over many spins. It's a sort of empirical density, uh, empirical magnetization. And then what's happening is that uh, I can plot this function as a function of x for typical configuration sigma. And the picture that I see is something like that. I have uh, uh, something which looks constant, except for small fluctuation for a very long 
interval, then suddenly it goes to its negative image, then it goes on, then suddenly does this, and so on. So what are these values? These values are 1 and beta, and the other one is minus and beta. And m beta and minus m beta are the magnetization for which there is a phase transition in mean field. So that m beta is actually the, uh, the solution of this equation, the positive solution. If beta is larger than 1, this equation has uh, three roots. One of them is positive, and I call it m beta. And what's happening to the typical configuration of the easy model is that uh, I have uh, this uh, behavior. So this range from here to here is of the order gamma minus 1. So the length of the transition is of order gamma minus 1, while these constant pieces are typically of order e to the c gamma minus 1 but C is positive. Also, I have something which stays in beta for very, very long, exponentially long pieces. Then suddenly I go down. I stay there for, again, something of this order. Then I jump back and so forth. I mean, in order to understand this, you should think that space is time. And uh, I, uh, I have a particle which is in uh, a double well with minima at m beta and minus m beta. So it stays in the bottom for a long time. Then by metastability, there is an excursion to the other well. It stays there, and then it jumps, and so on. So this is the space analog of the time uh, metastability behavior. Uh, they are random. And so, so this piece is, uh, um, if you normalize its uh, Poisson process. And this C, uh, we have almost an explicit formula for it. No, this is, uh, I mean, the model is this one, with this interaction. No, so, so the particle, sorry? Oh, yeah, you're right. So uh, J gamma xy is gamma, because I'm in one dimension, a fixed function of gamma x minus y, and j uh, of r is smooth, and it's uh, probability density. And uh, as compact support. So j of r is equal to 0 if r is larger than 1. So the interaction is gamma minus 1. So this gamma minus 1 is this length, uh, essentially. So this is on the scale of the interaction. But the fact that I'm in a phase transition makes this, uh, these parts very, very long, e to the c gamma minus 1. So now let's, uh, let's see why this gamma to the n appears. Well, you see, uh, now I have two, two uh, let's consider two lines in, in this array. You know, and uh, uh, let's say that the typical configuration uh, will have this kind of behavior in this and this one. And let's see whether what's uh, the, the energy cost of a mismatch. That is that uh, uh, 
Uh, on one side, I have a piece of pluses, and down, I have a piece of minuses. Well, the length is e to the c gamma minus 1. And there, the interaction will be, uh, between these will be of order gamma to the n, because that's the strength of each interaction. And so even if this uh, n is large, you see it's always killed by the exponential. So this is going to infinity. So the energy cost of a mismatch is going to infinity. So they cannot mismatch. And then actually, since they do not mismatch, they not even do that, but they remain essentially constant. Yes. You are looking at finite boxes. Here. Lambda, and then lambda yeah, and then lambda in, in this picture. Yeah. No, no, no. In this picture, I'm taking uh, the, the, the infinite volume of this mesh. I take uh, the typical sigma in this. And then I uh, plot this function. No, it's gamma. No, no, there is no box. This is x. Sorry. Of course, I mean, this, uh, this is not faithful, because uh, as I go farther and farther, I, I will see everything. But I mean, for, for a very long piece, I will see this picture. OK. so. So this is explaining, uh, is, gi is giving us, as I was saying, hope to study the hard roads problem. But then we got interested in this uh, easing approximation. And then we asked ourselves, what happens if I put myself at beta equal 1? Because at beta equal 1, mean field doesn't have a phase transition. But I have uh, a vertical interaction. So it could be that it's the vertical interaction which helps uh, uh, the cat's potential in, in, its, in its mean field behavior to produce a phase transition. Uh, so this is the, the next thing I want to talk about. What happens at beta equal 1? And this will be. Uh, I, I will be more specific on this uh, tomorrow. <coughs> While this theorem, uh, I will talk about it the day after tomorrow. So now this is the model, as I was saying. Lambda is uh, a positive parameter. And uh, for the uh, uh, the theorem that we have with the same people, I forgot. I shouldn't have uh, erased it, is that uh, uh, exists gamma, which is a function of lambda, so that uh, uh, for any gamma smaller or equal than this number, uh, We have this. We have a phase transition. That is the measure uh, defined uh, by taking plus boundary condition and taking the limit is different from the one with minuses. So I remember the boundary conditions. Here, here we have a fixed lambda positive. And then at the end today I will discuss, which is interesting. What I mean, how small can I take lambda as a function of gamma? 
but for the moment let's take uh, let's keep lambda fixed.